A month ago, Dr. Robert Maxwell was a senior researcher working at the facility, but a tragic mistake had cost the lives of several of his co-researchers. Now he was being led down a bleak hallway in armed biocontainment area 14, a rifle-wielding guard flanking him on either side. The once rising researcher had a very different title now, D-8724. He had been made a D-class personnel, a death sentence. However, as the guards led him to his possible demise, he wasn't dressed in the typical D-class orange jumpsuit. No, he was dressed in frilly Rococo dining wear more typical of 18th century France. If anything, Dr. Maxwell looked like he was on his way to meet royalty, and in a sense, he was. The former researcher had begged for any other assignment, but the site director insisted on committing Dr. Maxwell to tea time with SCP-082. He'd always been the talkative type, so the two would make a perfect pairing. And if the creature found him sufficiently amusing, then Maxwell might even leave the containment cell alive. He had heard legends of the giant creature they called the cannibal. Maxwell hoped they were just stories. Dr. Maxwell was pushed by the guards into a large, luxuriously appointed room, and the doors were locked behind him. He felt like a child, surrounded by freakishly large furniture and ten-foot-high ceilings. The fog of obnoxious floral perfumes couldn't fully cover up the pervasive smell of death that lingered in the cavernous halls of 082's palace. Thanks to an elaborate ruse conducted by the Foundation, SCP-082 believed he was the King of France, and that his containment cell was a palace where he remained for his own safety. The creature's continued good behavior and everyone else's safety relied on visitors keeping up that lie. Maxwell had never worked in this area of the facility, so a lot of the standard procedures were new to him. Still, his superior had given him a clear directive. Talk to the monster, communicate with him, be cordial and friendly. See if you can find out more about his mysterious past. And most importantly, if you want to survive, don't annoy him. The down-on-his-luck scientist gulped inside, trying to steady his nerves in this oversized, fake French palace. He just kept thinking, surely he can't be that big. He almost talked himself into believing that the accounts of the creature were just that, tall tales, until a huge figure began lumbering into the main chamber. It was him, SCP-082, also known as Fernand the Cannibal. SCP-082 was an eight-foot-tall hulking monster built sturdier than the castles it likes to imagine are its true home. Swollen, bloated, and grossly out of proportion, the creature clocks in at over 700 pounds, most of which is pure muscle that's almost impossible to pierce with conventional weaponry. SCP-082 stopped just feet away and stared at Dr. Maxwell with its beady, sunken in eyes like a hungry rat. Just the sight of it struck terror into Dr. Maxwell's heart, but he didn't dare show his fear. Instead, he remembered his brief training, bowing politely and forcing a smile, referring to the creature as Your Highness, and profusely thanking it for granting him an audience. The monster continued staring without saying anything, and then gave a wide, lock-jawed grin, showing off its huge teeth. It did everything through gritted teeth, except eat and sing. Dr. Maxwell hoped he wouldn't be a part of either activity. Fernand gave a low, booming chuckle. He thanked Dr. Maxwell for coming to give him some company and invited him to come further inside and take a seat, adding, with a sly wink, that he won't bite. The monster complained that he so rarely gets visitors to the palace these days, but he omitted the fact that the main reason for this was his tendency to devour them. Maxwell nodded and followed the giant deeper into its oversized abode. He couldn't help but notice that the monster's arms looked like huge, fleshy punching bags. He knew that if Fernand wanted to, he could easily crush him flat, just like he'd done to so many unfortunate guards during containment breaches. Fernand told Dr. Maxwell that he was thinking of having some decorating work done. The walls of his palace were starting to look awfully drab, and he gestured to one covered with a rusty red streak. Maxwell remembered that D-Class cleaners were sent into the containment cell twice a month to tidy any of Ferdinand's messes, but they often ended up becoming one of the messes themselves. The creature encouraged Maxwell to take a seat at his oversized dining table, while he tended to a pot of what he said was full of delicious onion soup. 
Maxwell obliged his host's request and took a seat at a huge chair that made him look like a six-year-old sitting at the grown-up's table. Meanwhile, Ferdinand was using a huge machete-like knife to cleave onions in half for his bubbling pot of stew. Even though Ferdinand had shown no signs of outward aggression, as he watched the cannibal hack away at onions with his enormous knife, Maxwell could feel himself beginning to sweat. After all, they didn't call this creature the cannibal for nothing. This was a monster with a truly horrifying body count. During previous containment breaches, it had taken enough tranquilizer to put down two elephants to subdue the creature, but not before multiple agents quite literally lost their heads in the process. Fernand was able to bite them off with one huge chomp like he was eating a drumstick, snapping right through the bone with his incredible tooth and jaw strength. Surprisingly, when he wasn't on a violent rampage, Foundation researchers had found SCP-082 to be unusually polite and forthcoming, offering the researchers plenty of information about himself and his past. The only problem was that almost everything the creature said was a complete lie. From his time as a researcher, Maxwell knew that there were only a few details about the creature that could be ascertained for certain. SCP-082 would reliably answer to the name Fernand, and genetically, Ferdinand was technically human. The means by which Ferdinand became so grotesquely huge, strong, and cannibalistic are still unknown. Foundation personnel are still looking into whether it's due to some kind of anomalous genetic mutation or by more supernatural means. All we know is that he's big, unpredictable, and extremely dangerous. Dr. Robert Maxwell sat terrified at the dining table of SCP-082 listening to Fernand's slightly dull blade chop through the final onion, which he then tossed into the boiling soup. Fernand had switched the topic of conversation to one of his favorite fictional characters, Hannibal Lecter. Of course, Hannibal the Cannibal isn't quite so fictional to Fernand. While he's been shown to be extremely intelligent in terms of puzzle solving and memory, he seems to have no understanding of the distinctions between fiction and reality. He assumes all movies and TV shows are a form of documentary or reality television. And ever since seeing The Silence of the Lambs, Ferdinand has been eager to meet with Dr. Lecter, which he emphasized to Maxwell over and over. Since trying to explain the concept of fiction to Ferdinand had never previously worked, Maxwell simply told him that Dr. Lecter is extremely busy at the moment, but will visit whenever he gets a chance. This seemed to satisfy Ferdinand, who placed two large bowls of steaming soup on the table before sitting down a little too close to Maxwell. He couldn't help but notice that the giant cannibal was now sitting within biting distance, and as a lowly D-class, nobody would be rushing in to save him if things went south. Ferdinand began ranting through his clenched teeth once more, occasionally stopping to consume a hefty spoonful of onion soup. Maxwell was sure to do the same, not wanting to seem anything less than polite. But soon, the tenor of Ferdinand's rant began to shift. Typically, the monster spoke French or heavily accented English. Now, he was affecting the accent of a Victorian gentleman, peppering his speech with tally-ho and the game is afoot. Maxwell was confused at first, but quickly realized the game Ferdinand was playing. It's well known that Ferdinand is a pathological liar who likes to play numerous characters, changing his mannerisms and clothes accordingly. These personas have included a vampire, Big Bird, Andre the Giant, Foundation researcher Dr. Bright, the Incredible Hulk, Alexander the Great, Captain Hook, Dr. Frankenstein, and Frankenstein's monster. And, of course, in this case, the iconic fictional detective, Sherlock Holmes. Fearing for his life in this strange situation, Dr. Maxwell did the only thing he could, play along. As Fernand reeled off his Holmesian delusions, Maxwell began to play the role of Dr. John Watson, asking follow-up questions and complimenting Ferdinand's impeccable deductive reasoning, and it seemed to be working. Ferdinand played along too, acting as though the two of them really were Arthur Conan Doyle's crime-fighting duo. Towards the end of their game, Dr. Maxwell was even starting to enjoy it, amazed that his quick thinking was actually keeping him safe. But just then, the cannibal froze, as if in a trance. He locked eyes with Dr. Maxwell, like a mad dog that you can't tell if it's going to bite you or not. He saw the creature's gargantuan teeth separating, its huge jaws stretching open. 
This could surely only mean one thing. Dr. Maxwell winced and prepared for death, cursing that all of his quick thinking had amounted to nothing. Fernand leaned towards him, his gaping maw with its hot onion-scented breath just inches away from Maxwell. And then, he began to sing. The cannibal broke into a raucous Victorian pub song, happy and jovial. In his moment of terror, Dr. Maxwell had forgotten that this was the other reason SCP-082 opens his nightmarish jaws. Relief washed over him, as he knew he was safe, at least for the moment. Not long after, Foundation guards arrived and escorted him from the cell, leaving the delusional giant to his own devices back in the so-called palace. The former researcher had done it. He had bested Ferdinand the Cannibal, and hopefully it would be the last time he'd ever be face to face with that deranged giant. Unfortunately for Dr. Robert Maxwell, in a performance review later that week, one of his superiors remarked that Ferdinand enjoyed his company and he had done a great job. Such a good job, in fact that Ferdinand insisted he have Dr. Maxwell for dinner, or any other meal, for that matter, sometime very soon. Now go check out SCP-096 The Shy Guy and SCP-3000 Anantashisha for more tales to capture the imagination from the SCP Foundation.